Amen. Come on, let's give God another good hand of praise. Amen, amen, amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time, amen. Amen, amen. And to all those that are qualified to call themselves fathers, happy Father's Day. You notice I use the word qualified because help making a baby don't make you no father, amen. Oh, Y'all might as well say amen. 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 It, it takes some work yes, to be a father. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. Paying child support ain't, 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 ain't making you no father. That, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, amen. Right. If you ain't going to stay with them, then, then give it up. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. That's right. Because you have made that baby. And, and, and leaving that, that woman there by herself with that baby. No, no, brother. You, you don't get off that easy. Amen. So when, when I hear men talking about, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I pay child support. You ain't doing nothing but what you're supposed to do. Amen. You, you don't get no pat on the back for that. Amen. 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 What, you want some Cheerios and some milk too? No. No, 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 no. This ain't Burger King. Have it your way. Amen. 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 You know, fathers have a responsibility uh, 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 to their children, to their family. And you want to know what's wrong with the world? Look at the missing fathers that's in the world. Amen. Amen. My father was a hoot, but at least he was there. Amen. Amen. My father from Tallahatchie, Mississippi, and he was, in, he was a firm believer in Southern comfort. Amen. That came in the form of his waist side of 42 inches of long leather. Amen. Amen. And he knew how to use it, too. I'm going to get to my sermon here, but I'm just reminiscing for a moment because my father was named Berkeley Powell, and, and, and we didn't have no yelling in the home, amen? My father didn't yell. He didn't talk about, get in there and sit down. No, he said, go sit down. That's all I needed to hear, amen? And he, he, he wasn't going to say it twice because twice comes with extra packages, Amen. Amen. Now, 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 now that's, that's what's wrong now. Now, that one time you beating the kid. No, we educating them. Amen. Because the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. Amen. Yeah. I got my daughter sitting in here. She'll tell you my daddy did not spare no rod, and he did not spoil no child. Amen. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. But we're good, glad to be here today, uh, thanking God for being who he is. And y'all going to have to work with me. My sinus is on overload right now. Amen. And, and when they fill up, they fill up good. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go to Psalms, the first division of Psalms. Yes, sir. Yeah. Chapter 1. Yeah. Right. And we're going to start at verse 1. Uh -huh. Last year we went to Psalms 15. Yeah. Oh, and we right. talked about fathers from that perspective. But this one is only for the man that can call himself a man. Amen. All right. The way of a righteous man. First division of Psalms, starting at verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And I'm reading from the ESV version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, yes, nor stand in the ways of sinners, yeah. nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but he delights in the law of the Lord. All right. And on his law, he meditates day right. and night. Yeah. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit uh -huh. in its season. And its leaves do not wither. Yeah. And all that he does, he prospers. Yeah. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Yeah. Verse 5 in Elias 1. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinner in the congregation of the righteous. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I say thank you. Amen. I thank you in the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord, even as I stand here getting ready to preach your word, 
I ask that you hide me behind your cross and in my stead. Leave your sweet Holy Spirit. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, my God, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. And Lord, if someone may ask, what must I do to be saved? These words can be a light unto their pathway where they find a waiting door. Go in and stop with you. Lord, we'll forever give you the praise, glory, and honor. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I think on what it means to be a father today, I see that it's not easy. I see so many things that come up against a man of God today. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Besides all this, he has to deal with, he has to deal with who he is in relationship to God. Many scriptures make mention of the father of all creation, the universe, the everlasting and living God, father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes scripture makes mention of the most important characteristics of God. But before many of us knew who God was, there was another person called Father. He was the one that mother loved, sister admired, and you wish you were. This day is set aside for only those that can truly call themselves Father. We have fond memories of our Father. As I think about the days with my Father of how I wanted to be like this man. I wanted to be strong, intelligent, inventive, and sure of myself. I looked at my father with the awe and amazement of a child. Just to be by his side was all I wanted. All I needed. I wanted him to know I could do just like him. Even on those days outside in the blustery winters of Chicago. When he had to fix his car, yeah. temperature below zero, yeah. and he's ever working. I wanted him to know I could stand it too. Yeah. I was freezing, y'all. <laughs> I wanted to mimic him. Yeah. My father was everything to so many people. Charismatic, talkative, intelligent, yeah. strong, and vibrant. But look at fathers today. How many have persevered the storm of being called dad, daddy, or even papa? Have they shown the determination that it takes to be called all these things? Have they put their trust in God that will lead them to true happiness? All I want to know is fathers, where are you? Fathers, where are you? As we look at this passage of scripture, as on last week we see another word that ever rings throughout scripture, it is the word blessed. As we said on last week, blessed can mean many things, but in regards to God, it means that you're blessed and that you're saved. But here, blessed is saying you can also be happy, right. man of God. Right. Blessed is the man. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Everybody walking around in pants and, and got some chest on his hair ain't no man. Right. Mm. Right. Did I hit your front door? Everybody that got two muscles ain't no man. No, 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 no. Just because you may have a gift of gab and women may fall at your feet don't make you no man. Just because you got a head full of hair don't make you no man. Not even the finest suit and the most elegant shoes gonna make you no man. 
But a man of God is first and foremost blessed. Point number one, fathers are blessed in God. Fathers are blessed in God. I've had a few men in my life that have blessed me to be the man I am today. I will be remiss if I didn't mention my own father, Berkeley Powell, who taught me the value of education and hard work. He said a man's identity is wrapped up in what he does. The next man would be Pastor Albert Walker, who taught me what a man of God should and must do. He said, your gifts will make room for you. That's right, that's right. Another man was a man by the name of David Anthony Shabel, a school teacher in Chicago, right. who took a young boy that went to high school with a third grade reading level right. and made him and got him prepared for, high school, for college. Then Pastor Rogers Kirks, who taught me to trust in God's plan, no matter what happens in your life. Yeah. And the last one, Deacon William C.B. Harrison, who taught me how to dress. He helped my brother look good, y'all. And he said, if you ain't got a good pair of shoes, you ain't got nothing. How blessed is the man. Think for a moment of the qualifications of a good man. This man is a man that walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor with sinner or scoffer. The first two part of these verses are saying something to the man. As we look today, we can't even identify men from boys no more. Men who are well past the age are still dressing like they're 13. Men who should be teaching is still out there trying to play. I don't understand what's going on in the world. As we look at this landscape of barrenness of fatherhood, you can't blame it all on a woman. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Everybody got something to bring to the table. Right. This revelation and understanding says that if a man is a man, then he is blessed. But in order to be blessed, he has to have some God in him. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't always say that I was a man. Right. I, I can round about picture when I became a man. And by this time, I had helped bring three children into the world. But at the age of 33, something happened to me. My mind went into a turmoil of confusion. I sat back and I almost went crazy. Because the life I was living wasn't pleasing me no more. And I never forget that no matter who I talked to, they couldn't help me understand what was going on. But on a Saturday night, I sat on my front porch and I did what every sinner should and must do. I called on the name of an almighty God and I said, God, if you clean up what I messed up and start me all over again, I'll do anything. You say. I thought I was on straight street. But everything my hand touched went wrong. Many people will say to a man, to a father, happy Father's Day. We, 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 we say something we don't really know about that person. 
We don't know if they've been a good father or not. We are just assuming. But if you have been a good father, bless is the man who is. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 19.5 million children, that's one in four, live without a father. There are many children that have done well minus this hardship. But a blessed man stays with his children, stays with his family. Though the road get hard, you hang in there. One of the things my father told me when I took him to see my brand new baby boy, he said, your life ends and what you live from now until the day he dies is to make sure he's taken care of. I'm knocking the door off of 60, y'all. And I'm still raising my kids. I'm still telling them what and what not to do. I'm still providing for some things. Ain't that right? Uh huh. I say I ain't gonna do nothing, and I'm going in my pocket, saying, "No, nah, you can't go over that." But here's the keys. Uh huh. Where you at? No, nah, I'm not coming. How far is that? How long? Would I be back before dark? <laughs> when a baby born, fatherhood, motherhood does not stop. Until you close your eyes for the last time. And that's when the job is done, fathers. You can't say my job was done when they moved out. Your job just began. If I can take all my kids and push them back past 16, they never leave the house. Before 16 was some good years. These jackrabbits got up to 29, 30, and 40. I'm like, whoa, I didn't sign up for all this. But my name is Daddy. Yeah. This man has to walk and stand upright. He can't be leaning to the side. He can't be Tossed to and fro. He can't be undecisive in his judgments. The Bible says, let your yes be yes and let your no's be no's. 1 Timothy 3 and 5 says, if someone does not know how to manage his own house, how would he care for the house of God? Guess what? I know I taught my kids right. That don't mean they're going to do right. But when they come home, whatever you was doing out in the street, you leave out there. Because the same rule applied when you was five as you are 35. We don't cuss up in here. We don't drink up in here. Uh huh. And if you come in here, you better be in here before 11 o'clock because all those are locked. And where you at? You better stay there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. My daughter right there, she'll tell you I'm telling the truth. Yeah. When we are men, you don't demand respect. You give respect. Yes, That's right. yes, the Bible says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. That means don't make them mad. But it didn't say you couldn't correct them. To understand what God is doing, you must first look at the man. The first thing created in all creations for this planet. After God formed the heavens and the earth, the first thing he made 
was man. Yeah. The Bible says in first, I mean in Genesis chapter 1 around verse 27, let us make man. And guess what? In our own image. This man was both physical and spiritual. He had an awareness of his surroundings, but also an understanding of his relationship to an almighty God. When God asked Adam, where are you? It wasn't that he was looking for him or he couldn't find him. He knew exactly where Adam was, where he placed him, in the garden. But what he was asking Adam, the first man, what is your relationship with me right now? Man of God, what is your relationship with God right now? Are you more concerned with the things of this world or are you concerned about your relationship with God? And I, I, I know that has to be paramount. Point number two, fathers ought to be trees to their families. Fathers ought to be trees to their family. Sometimes being a good father means living like a tree on an island all by yourself. Being a tree that stands alone in the midst of a storm. Being seen as one that always says no is not a good feeling. Fathers at times give the responsibility to raising their children to the mothers and comes in only when requests to fix something. Uh -huh. This is an act of communication. Communication says that a family dynamic is necessary. The father sets the mode for the next generation and all those to come. There are generational teachings that must be done away with from each generation that proceed. Godly men identify these things. Fathers ought to be blessed and get his instructions from God and stand on the word of God. Fathers ought to be water to their families so that they can grow strong and never withstanding, with withstanding the troubles of the world. Fathers stand strong with their families, yeah. Yeah. not apart from their families. Right. Ephesians 6, 4 says, do not provoke your children. Bring them up in discipline and instruction of the Lord. Being a father doesn't stop. So even if your kid 30, 35, 40, 50, 60. Fathers, it's your job to straighten them out. You know mama real good about wherever you mess up. That's where I'm going to straighten you up. But mothers also said this. You just wait till your daddy get home. Uh -huh. Wait till your daddy get home. You rather have mama have whipped you 10 times before daddy got home. You hear them keys rattling in that door? And that door open? And then you hear it close? And then silence happens. And you say, mama telling them. And you wait for the cataclysmic storm that's about to be unleashed on you. And it doesn't happen. You in there for an hour. Two hours. It's 11 o'clock. Say, so, whew, got past that one. Just as soon as you said that. Daddy come in there and say, come on, let me take care of you right now. And then the storm that you thought you had bypassed 
comes in like a raging hurricane. Fathers will bring you to attention. Now, I'm, I'm happy to say that I have never, ever had to go to jail for my children. Amen? And I, I, I remember going to the school for my, my one daughter. Man, the school called me off of work and said, your daughter is having problems. So I left. I, I missed a half a day of school. I mean work. So I get there. The principal named Mr. Smiley. And I said, what did she do? He said, well, she's a distraction. I said, a distraction? I said, she ain't nothing but five foot two. How is she a distraction? Well, she, 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 she's running around and she's a distraction. I said, how is she a distraction? He said, well, her physical appearance has everybody looking and, and she, she, we can't get anything done. I said, well, I don't think she's the one with the problem. I said, I think you're the one with the problem. I said, what do you want me to do? Take her, put her in my pocket, and then hide her away from the rest of the world? What he was trying to say is my dog was too well endowed. And I said, I ain't got nothing to do with that. That's nature. Blame my mama. When I left, <laughs> y'all open the door for me so I get out of here with <laughs> When I left, he said, well, have a nice day, Mr. Powell. I said, have a good day, Mr. Spineless. <laughs> you stand up for your children. You stand up for your family. Yeah. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the ways that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you look around, there are no children here today, but a few. Fathers, get on your job. Bring your children to church. If you want to grow a strong family, you got to be where they at, amen? One day, I found my children telling many things of the way they viewed me. All of it was in love. My son said, I got the worst of it all. My daughter said, my middle daughter said, huh, you think you got the worst. I got the worst and the leftovers. But it was that little one. See, I ain't get nothing. Because I saw how daddy did y'all. I made notes. And I stayed out of the way. <laughs> Children learn from their fathers. They are quite inquisitive. Last point. Fathers are to be committed to God and their families. Fathers are to be committed to God and their family. C.S. Lewis says, no man knows bad, how bad it is until he tries to do good. No man knows how bad he is until he tries to do good. Being a child of God is not hard. There is nothing or no one that's ever going to change my mind on that. The hard part is not doing what you like to do in your sinner life. Because living for God is easy if you can be done with that. A man of God should be able to be committed to God, his word, his will, and his way. 
We never ever test the resources of God until we see things have become impossible. We never ever test the resources of God until we see that the things have become impossible. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. I am happy to say and will say to my dying day, I have been husband of one wife. 39 years with the same woman. When trouble came my way, God helped me to stay where he put me. Put me with Linda. Put me with Linda. Put me with Linda. Uh-huh. L-I-N-D-A. Amen. Because God knew what I needed. But the only way I knew that was to be in God's will. Proverbs 21 9 says, It is better to live in a corner of, a, of the house than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Guess what? At least you, hey, you may not be in the house, but you own the house. You better stay there. Amen? Because grass ain't green on the other side, it died too. Amen? There are times when a man must look and see that once he has been planted by God, he must in due season show some fruit. Uh, every man has a season to grow up. Every man has a season to do right. Every man has a season to love his wife. Every man has a season to love his children. Every man has a season to go to work. Women, if these jackrabbits ain't going to work, show them how to go out the door. Man is supposed to work. Not stay at home and babysit. A man is supposed to get up, go make the bread, bring home a loaf, let mama slice it up. My, my, my mother said that when her husband came home, yeah. he put his check down and walked away. She said her mother went to where her husband worked, yeah. picked his check up, yeah. and brought it home. Yeah. <laughs> Man didn't even know how much he made. Yeah. Uh-uh. And my wife said, uh-uh, you can't spend no more. And, and, and I bought something the other day. She said, can we afford that? I said, it's $20, baby. $20. Now, I'm the man of my house. Don't get me wrong. I'm like what Pastor Walker said. I run everything in my house. I run the washing machine, the dishwasher, the sweeper, and I will cook you a awesome lasagna. That's how much I'm running in my house, amen? And all I need to see is my wife sit back and say, mm, mm, good. Mm -hmm. I don't leave no dish in the sink. Uh -huh. If she done cooking, I wash all the dishes. Uh -huh. If her car need fixed, I get it fixed. Uh huh. No, one thing, I, one rule: you clean out your own car. Amen. But a man has to be a man. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus said, "Follow me, yes, as I follow." Paul said, "Follow me, as I follow Christ." Yeah. Our Lord knew what He was doing. Yeah. He knew that when He made man, man was going to come with some problems. Yes, you can't. Woman, women, you cannot take a man and raise him a second time. Right. He either is a man or he is not. He is able to stand or he will fall. He will either grow or he will grow out. A committed father never gives up. He never gives in. 
and he never complains. If he's sick, he acts like he's not. When he's tired, he acts like he got all the energy in the world. When he's hungry, he acts like he already ate. But when he is tired, he don't show his tiredness. My family sometimes look in my face and they said, Daddy, you tired. I said, no, I'll be all right. God is going to hold me up another day. Blessed is the man that is committed to the Lord. Blessed is the man that stands with God. Blessed is the man that don't walk in the counsel of scoffers or wicked people. Blessed is the man that will stand for God. Blessed is the man that stands with God in all seasons. Blessed is the man that know God will provide. Blessed is the man who will trust, trust God to the end of his day. Blessed is the father that never gives up on his family. Blessed is the one who is committed to the end. Jesus Christ said, let not my will be done, but let thine will be done. He said, I didn't come here to do what I want to do. He says, I come here to do my father's business. It's the Lord that made man. It's the Lord that guides man. It's the Lord that keeps man. It's the Lord who provides. Jesus showed us as being the father of all creation, yeah. how he had to endure being a man. Yeah. He endured being talked about. Yeah. He endured being spit on. Yeah. He endured being beaten. Yeah. He endured being taken places he never wanted to go. Yeah. He, be, he endured carrying an old rugged cross. Yeah. He endured being humiliated. Yeah. He endured being placed on an old rugged cross. He, be, he endured hanging there from the sixth to the ninth hour. He endured giving up the ghost. He endured all these things as a loving father would. But he endured so he could take his rest next to his father waiting to return for all those that love him. Man of God, don't give up on God. Stand with God all your days. When you feel like giving up, raise your head unto the hills. From with all cometh all your help. And when you feel tired and like you got no more strength, tell God for yourself, I need a little bit more strength. I need your help. I was telling Sister Marsha and a few other people the other day, I was sitting at the house at the, in my office, and then I just started crying to the Lord. I said, God, I need you to tell me how to fix this problem. And I think I cried for 10 minutes. I went to work that next day, and it's like the Holy Ghost just took my hands and started typing for the information that we were seeking. What took us two years to find, God did in less than 24 hours. Y'all right. give God a good hand of praise for that. But nobody will ever believed me when I said that God took control of my hands and brought all that information forward. And we did not know how bad we needed it until God showed it all. Men, unless you're going to let God take control of you, you're going to have a hard day. But I'm living witness that if you trust God, in all things, yes, he'll do yes, the impossible. Yes, Come on, let's give God a good hand of praise. Yes. 
The doors of the church is open. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change something right here. If you have your father with you here today, or your child that's a father here with you today, I want you to bring him down. If you've been a father to somebody, I want every man to come right here, right now.